A few weeks ago, we beat Pokemon Heart Gold, playing through it while following the official strategy guide as closely as possible. We had a ton of fun, but one thing missing from that first guide was the post-game where we can travel through the Kanto region, as well as some other cool extra features like the Battle Frontier, the full National Pokedex, and various other smaller events in HeartGold and Soul Silver that the first guide didn't cover. It turns out that the guide I had was only part one of the HeartGold and Soul Silver guide, which only covered Johto, while they sold a separate part two for Kanto and some of the other post-game elements. This is the official Pokemon Kanto guide and National Pokedex guide, which is quite thick, and although it is technically the official Pokemon Kanto guide, it doesn't exactly work for games like Pokemon Fire Red, where Kanto is the main focus of that game, despite being the official Kanto guide. I had a lot of people in the comments point out that there was part two of this guide, which I somehow missed when I first purchased the original part one of Heart Gold guide. A lot of people have also even reached out to me offering to sell me or straight up give me their own strategy guide, which is so very kind of you guys, but something about giving random people online who watch my videos my address doesn't seem like a good idea. So as much as I appreciate your offers, I'm going to have to pass them all up. So getting into the guide, at the start it details the trainers we meet in Kanto, a map, and that's pretty much it before getting into the actual walkthrough. These guides usually have tons of information we have to read before we get to the actual gameplay walkthrough, but I guess that since this is part 2, it makes sense to have a pretty quick introduction. Part 1 of this video will also be linked in the description, so check it out before watching this one. Consider leaving a like if you want to support the channel, as one like goes a long way, and also consider subscribing for more Pokemon videos, and let's continue our journey in Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver by traveling through the Kanto region and hammering away at any trainer in our way. We continue our journey right where we left off, in our home of New Bark Town after becoming the Johto Region Champion. To recap the team, we have Wildwing the Tauros, Pancakes the Heracross, Subscribe the Feraligator, which you should totally do again since we're pretty close to 100k subscribers, McFlurry the Jinx, Rocky the Onyx, and Hoa, which I just did a nickname. The guide even mentions how a new journey begins here and even says, quote, After you've defeated the Pokemon League Elite Four and Champion, your adventure is over. Or is it? Which I thought was a funny little quote. The first thing we have to do now is talk to our mother who tells us to go see Professor Elm, and then we get to see him and he gives us the SS ticket so we can travel to the Kanto region. The guide also notes how the Battle Frontier is open now if we want to challenge it, but for this video I'll only be focusing on the Kanto walkthrough portion. Once we make it into the dock in Olivine City, we meet Professor Oak who upgrades our Pokedex to the National Dex, so we can catalog some of the new Pokemon we'll find in the Kanto region. So now it makes sense for the guy to want us to set sail to Kanto, right? Well, instead of doing that, we're going to go check out the cool new upgraded national park like the guide said right here, which has things like Wormpole and Cricketot added to it. Nothing really too exciting, I guess, but I did manage to catch a Scyther in the bug catching contest since I happened to be playing on a Saturday when the bug catching contest was open at this point in the game, which I named Whopping since the judge described my Scyther as Whopping but I accidentally hit OK after W, so it's just named W for now. We end up winning the bug catching contest because of the Scyther, which the guide says yields the highest amounts of points in the contest alongside with Pinsir, which was pretty cool. Now the guide finally wants us to board the fast ship SS Aqua, where we have to wake up this sleeping sailor and find this missing girl so we can finally land in the Vermilion City of the Kanto region. On the ship, we also got the Metal Cut, which was pretty fitting because we can use that to evolve our Scyther, except I can't exactly trade this Pokemon, so I guess it's stuck as a Scyther for now. As we exit the ship, we see Suicune at the dock in Vermilion City, and you see is still chasing after it. Suicune just ends up running away from Yusin, so we go to check out the Pokemon fan club where we get a free rare candy, and next, all that's left to do is take on the Vermilion City gym leader, Lieutenant Surge, and his electric type Pokemon. There isn't as much to do in these Kanto towns as there was in Johto, since this version of Kanto is much more condensed than any other region we've had so far, but the guide recommends ground moves against Surge's gym, and warns us that he'll use Double Team and Thunder Wave, so I know Rock will be our best bet here. Since our team was a bit underleveled, I leveled them up a little bit, and Rocky ends up learning a ground type move in Sand Tomb at 46, which will be pretty cool for this gym. Not the best ground type move to have, but the only ground type move Onyx learns via level up according to the back of the guide. Lieutenant Surge ends up leading with his signature Raichu that just spams double teams and was quite the pain, 
but I keep hammering away through the double teams and through the paralysis until I run out of sand tomb and headbutt PP on Rocky. So after finally knocking out that Raichu after like 40 turns, I am forced to use some of my other Pokemon. The rest of the battle goes by a lot easier since I wasn't double teamed or paralyzed nearly as much as the Raichu did, although it still made it a little bit annoying. To add a little bit more salt in the wound, Lieutenant Surge gives us the TM for Shockwave after an electric type move that can never miss which is pretty good against double teaming Pokemon. It is an electric type attack, so it wouldn't have been that good versus Surge's electric type Pokemon, but it still hurts me a little bit. The next page just shows something about how you can catch Latios or Latias in Kanto, although they're roaming Pokemon. Maybe we'll be lucky enough to run into one later on, but for now we have to head north and into Saffron City. This glittering metropolis, as the guide puts it, is the largest city in Kanto, where we can get the TM for Psychic from Mr. Psychic to teach McFlurry the Jinx, get the upgrade item from this self-security guard that I unfortunately can't use right now, and also learn that you can change your Rotom form in the Sylphco, which is neat, although we don't have a Rotom. After that, we have to go talk to the copycat in this town, which for some reason unlocks some other Kanto events later on, then visit the Fighting Dojo, which is currently on hold, and finally take on the Saffron City Gym Leader, Sabrina. Sabrina uses psychic type Pokemon and is known to have psychic powers herself, but the guide says, quote, she won't see your bug, dark, or ghost type moves coming, which really makes me doubt not only her alleged psychic abilities, but also her ability as a trainer if she doesn't know basic type advantages against the type she's supposed to be a specialist in. I use Feraligatr for most of the fight since it has access to Crunch, giving us the Marsh Badge. For some reason, she only has three Pokemon in this battle, while Surge previously had five Pokemon, and I also noticed that the pictures of the badges in the guide don't have any color, and they also don't even have color if you check the badges in your trainer card. Something about seeing a badge called the Rainbow Badge have no color just seemed weird to me. But the following pages showcase all the Gym Leader rematches, along with what Pokemon they have and what times and days of the week you can battle them, then tells us to head towards Celadon City. The page after that then shows Lavender Town instead, so I guess we're gonna go there for now, where we find the Kanto Pokemon Federation and lead into Lavender Town. One of the strangest things about Lavender Town and Kanto in this game as a whole is the decision to change the Pokemon Tower, a burial site for Pokemon, into a radio tower of all things. Something about that just seems off to me, but we have to quickly pass through Lavender Town for now before we return later on to do some other stuff in the story. The second part of this guide has a lot more backtracking it seems than the first part that showcased Johto by the way, as we don't return to Lavender Town for a long time and there were some other small events here and there sprinkled around in the guide so far that we can't do just now. What we have to do now though is make it through the Rock Tunnel which has no trainers in this game and looks very different than what it does in Fire Red and Leaf Green, and then get into Route 10 where we have the Power Plant. The Power Plant actually has a story purpose in this game for once, since we have to go in there to track down a Team Rocket Grunt who stole a part from it. We're told from the Power Plant employees that the Team Rocket Grunt headed towards Cerulean City, so I make our way towards there to find the Grunt in an attempt to lay down the law, but he ends up running away. I chase him up north towards the Nugget Bridge where he tells us that he hid the part in the Pokemon Gym of this town, but in order to challenge this gym we have to keep heading up north to find the gym leader, Misty. On the way to find her, we find Bill's house where his grandfather is house sitting for him. If you show Bill's grandfather the Eevee that you got from Bill back in Johto, he'll actually give you the choice of choosing an evolutionary stone that you want, which is pretty cool. After that, we rudely interrupt Misty's date nearby Bill's house, although once she realizes how cool of a trainer we are from all of our Johto gym badges, she gets excited, ditches her date, and runs back to her gym, all because we're just much cooler than whoever this guy is. We can return here later on too to catch Suicune if we want to, but for now let's challenge Misty's gym. The guide recommends Grass, an electric type Pokemon for Misty's water type Pokemon, and the best we have is Thunder from Wild Wing, which does an okay job until it eventually faints, so I have to use some of our other Pokemon to finish the job and get the Cascade Badge. The guide even recommends that we give our Pokemon Person Berries to help against confusion from Misty's Pokemon as she has Pokemon with Water Pulse which can confuse us, which I thought was a rather niche application since Water Pulse doesn't have a high confusion chance. And I didn't even have any Person Berries to give my Pokemon anyway, and I don't even know where to get them since the guide didn't really tell me where to get them. Next, we can head into Celadon City where we can visit the Game Freak offices. I'm sure they'd be glad to hear that I'm playing through their game exactly as intended or as intended. There, I finally said it. 
And we can also get the spell tag item here if we really want to, however it's only available during certain parts of the day, more specifically between 8pm and 4am, which was not the times that I was playing while recording this part of the game. Next we can check out the department store and meet Crasher Wake of all people, who gives us some mass of the Sinnoh region starters. Crash Awake randomly appears in some Pokemon games for some reason, like in black and white as well. And he always looks so out of place since he isn't exactly the most iconic gym leader, and he definitely stands out appearance-wise compared to a normal NPC in Pokemon. The guy then wants us to play Voltorb Flip, which exists in Kanto 2, and I lose again here as well, and finally challenge Erika's Grass-type gym. The guy recommends Ice and Flying-type Pokemon against her, and also to stock on Antidotes, which I do, so I leave with McFlurry of the Jinx to start the battle off with some Ice-type attacks, before switching into Ho-Oh to lay waste to the rest of her team. Now we have to head down to Cycling Roads, where we exchange numbers with this random biker, which happens to be the first Kanto trainer we do that with, which is kinda cool, and get into Fuchsia City. We could go to the Pal Park right now if we wanted to, which replaced the Safari Zone previously, to transfer over some Pokemon from the Game Boy Advance Pokemon games into HeartGold and SoulSilver, but since the whole point of this series is to beat the game by only using the information presented in the guide, and trying my best to act like I have never played Pokemon before, I have never even played a Game Boy Advance Pokemon game to do this, so I just brush right past it and do the next challenge, which is going to the Future City Gym, led by Janine. The guide recommends Psychic moves, so I taunt Jinx, the Psychic team we got not too long ago from Mr. Psychic, to sweep her team in two shakes of a slowpoke's tail, making this the easiest gym of all of Kanto so far. Now we have to head east out of Fuchsia City, through routes 14 and 15, where we run into Suicune again. The next page of the guide then randomly showcases some of the trainer classes in the game that we've encountered so far, and on the following pages it shows Route 11, although we won't be able to get there for a while as that route is all the way near Vermilion. This section is a little bit confusing since we're headed backwards through the route numbers right now, so we have to go through Route 13 and 12 before we get to Route 11, and on the way we pick up the fishing rod near the Silence Bridge. Not many people know that this bridge is called the Silence Bridge, mainly because you can avoid this area in just about every game it appears in. The guide then tells us to head through the gate into Route 11 near Vermilion City to wake up the Snorlax using our new upgraded radio, and I wonder why I didn't just have us fly to Vermilion City to wake up the Snorlax from the other side, which would have been a lot easier and faster. I remember struggling waking up this Snorlax as a kid when I first played through Silver version, since I didn't know that you had to wake it up using your radio, and it made me wonder how I was able to even find that hidden power plant part in Misty's gym, which was much easier to miss in the original Gold and Silver compared to this game. I end up waking the Snorlax up anyway, fail catching it because I didn't realize I only had one Ultra Ball in my bag, and head all the way through the newly revamped Diglett's Cave and into Pewter City. Here we can talk to this random NPC who gives us the item needed to battle the opposite cover legendary Pokemon, in our case Lugia, and we can also challenge Brock's rock type gym. The guide recommends water moves and grass types here, so I led with Feraligator and taught Giga Drain to ho that we got from Erika's gym to part his water types, giving us another badge in the Kanto region. From here the guide wants us to check out Mount Moon which is optional but has some cool updates in this game. As soon as we enter Mount Moon we're ambushed by our rival who challenges us to another battle, and just like part 1 of the guide it doesn't tell us much information about how to beat him or what types to use against his Pokemon like it does for gym leader battles, and only says that his Pokemon are 9 to 11 levels higher than when we last battled him in Johto. After defeating him, he then travels back to the Dragon's Den to train, and on the following page, it showcases how we can rematch a few trainers on certain days, including our rival. As for Mount Moon, there isn't really anything to do here, but if you come here on Monday nights between 8pm and 4am, you can find some Dancing Clefairies, which is kinda cool. With Mount Moon out of the way, we now have to head south through Viridian Forest, through Viridian City even, and make a quick stop in Pallet Town where we meet meet Red's mom and see Professor Oak again, before continuing south through the water into Cinnabar Island. Due to a volcano that recently erupted and destroyed the city, all that's really left here is a Pokemon Center and Blue, who is the 8th gym leader in Kanto now. He waits for us here until we defeat the 7th gym leader, Blaine, which is temporarily relocated in the Seafoam Islands in one of the caves. Before the part about battling Blaine though, I noticed that the guide details the Elite 4 rematch now, which we can't even do yet since we're two badges short but we will revisit that in a little bit. I eventually make my way towards Blaine's cave, and use water types like the guide recommends to defeat his gym pretty easily, allowing us to return to Cinnabar Island to tell Blue that we won, so he himself returns to his own gym so we can challenge him. Blue's gym has some diverse types, as his gym doesn't focus on one soul type like every other gym in this game, and focuses around using the move Trick Room for some reason. 
My team is luckily able to counter all of his Pokemon to hit them for super effective damage though, giving us the victory and allowing us to rematch the Elite Four, where we have some new and stronger Pokemon to face up against. The guide doesn't really detail the rematch nearly as much as it does when you first challenge Elite Four, probably since this is more of an optional thing, I just thought it was cool to do again, so I level up my team to around level 70 to match Lance's final team. I probably went a little bit overboard with the levels, but this part of the game is just a rematch and it doesn't really matter too much. This Elite Four run as a whole went down pretty easily, and I mainly wanted to do it again just because Koga has a Swalot on his rematch team now, which I thought was so cool, and it was good practice for the real final fight against Red at Mount Silver. The credits do roll after we defeat Lance for a second time though, making this the second ending of the games I guess, but we still have to prepare for the true final boss. I level up the team to around the mid 80s to match Red's team, and fly to Mount Silver make it to the top using the guy to finally challenge Red. The guide even has a punny little note that says, quote, all hail the champion, since it's hailing on top of Mount Silver, and suggests that I keep swapping my Pokemon around to find Red's weaknesses. The hail being up in the battle meant that Jinx couldn't miss a blizzard, which certainly helped against his Venusaur, and I was able to mainly use Jinx, Heracross, and Ho-Oh to defeat Red, and complete the post-game story of Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver as Nintendo intended, or as Nintended. Overall, this second part of the guide was fine, with my only real issue being the constant flipping back and forth between some pages and some things being out of place, which is a problem that pretty much every guide we look at has. There really weren't many funny or punny quotes or lines that I remember throughout this guide, or many mistakes even, which is pretty good. This part really seems to focus on the extra elements though, like catching the many legendary Pokemon available in this game, doing the battle fronts here, and even training up your Pokemon to make a good team. In terms of being an actual guide, it was pretty good, although you guys know already that I prefer the weirder guides with mistakes and weird writing, which tends to be more common in the third party older guides from earlier Pokemon games. In the end, if you really enjoyed this video, consider leaving a like, as one likely does go a long way, and subscribe for more Pokemon videos. I plan on having another Nintendo intended video out by the end of the month or so, so be on the lookout for that. But until then, check out my other videos too, since I'm sure that if you enjoy these Nintendo intended videos, you'd enjoy my other videos just as much. With that out of the way, I want to thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a great rest of your day. I will see you all next time, and bye bye.